What is up? What is up? Who's got something for me to look at? Small group today. I love it. Any questions? Anything for me to look at? Oh, yeah, I've got a question. Yeah. Oh, that's Go okay. Yeah. Oh, Go sorry, I'm glitching there. Um, so I'm running power content at the moment. Um, okay. The view to run into my slot. It's only been on since Sunday. The stats are good. Um, when do I start to optimize? Is it when they hit 2,000 impressions at campaign level or ad set level or individual ad level? Say that one more time. You're breaking up for some reason. Um, okay. Is it um, so? When do I start to optimize my ads? Is it when it's at the 2,000 impressions at campaign level or ad, uh, ad level? Um, you want 2000 impressions per ad and each ad should have its own ad set per ad per ad underneath that ad set. So you have one ad under each ad set and you want to optimize when that ad set, right? Cause you only have one ad. Uh, I don't think of. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So I've got each other here at 2000. Okay. And how long? Because I'm only running like a, a dot, like a dollar a day on them. So when do I refresh more content? Do I leave it for what, a week or two weeks? So whatever. So I, I would even push it to 5,000 impressions because Facebook's taking longer to optimize because of iOS updates. So you want 15 cents per through play before 5,000 impressions. And then as it gets closer to 5,000 impressions, you want it to creep down closer to a dollar per 100% video view. So the first, so the first KPI, 15 cents per through play until 5,000 impressions, but you want to see it start getting closer to that dollar per 100% video view. Yeah, because I've hit some that double, some are like 12, 12 per uh, six pound of spent on one. I've got 12, 100%. So some are good, but I think it's too early to start optimizing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. For some reason, your internet is is really yeah. bad. So it's like going in and out. Um, but I did it. I did a video. If you go to my YouTube video, frequently asked questions from students, I actually um, went through the optimization of power content on there. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Who's next? Miss Angel. Hi, how you doing? Doing good. It is pouring down rain over here. I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, I am running conversion ads and they're so expensive. <laughs> and I'm like, define, we'll define it. Let's define expensive. Okay. Um, well, I got some average leads for my warm at $21 right now. What's your, um, what's your value per lead? I, I mean like the target I put in the little calculator was 11. Okay. Well, um, no, 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 not your cost per lead value per lead. To so total revenue divided by leads, total revenue divided by leads. I want what do you mean? Like by past leads? Oh, hold on. I know what you're mm -hmm. asking. Hold on. Hold yep, on. Yep, I yep. have that. I have that. Because a lot of times people think their cost per lead is high, but then their value per lead is like 60. And so when they're yes. paying $20 a lead, it's like, so why? yeah, I did check that like the other day and I think it was like 25 something. So yes, you're that is about what your, your value is $25 a lead. I remember it being like, I remember it being like 25. I can pull it up one second. Okay. Sorry. Um, no worries. So let's see, 40% of 25, 40 times 25. Yeah. So you'd want, you'd want around to stay around $10 per lead, yeah. um, uh, for, for everyone who's just too, like, who, who doesn't understand what I'm asking her. Um, a lot of times people think that, oh, my lead costs are high. Right. And so the math problem that I have people do is, well, what is your value? value per per lead? Lead. Right. So that's total revenue of the funnel divided mm -hmm. by the number of leads. Um, so like your last launch, exactly. And right. so, and so here, here's what we want. Usually the people that I work with want to pay about 40%, no higher 
of the cost of the value per lead. So they're, they're willing to pay 40% of the value per lead in order to acquire that lead. So if her value per lead is $25, 40% of that would be around $10. So, but if Azelle is, doesn't have a lot of overhead, she might be willing to pay 50, 60, or even 70%, right? Um, so I'll repeat the formula one more time. So it's yeah. uh, total re total revenue uh -huh. divided by the number of leads coming into the funnel. So if you have, so let's say you're doing a challenge or a webinar and you make $10,000 and you had a hundred leads, you would divide $10,000 by a hundred. And then that'll give you your value per lead. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I thought I had it done, but yeah, no worries. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, yeah, no worries. We're just chilling here. It's raining. Okay. Total leads. Okay, I got it. Okay, so then that means divided by 424. Wait, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> the overall number divided by the lead you got last time. Yep. Yeah, so total revenue of your total launch. Revenue. Yeah. Divided by the amount of leads. Okay. Yeah. So now what I'm getting is something like 424. Uh 117. So, that seems okay. Fine. So 117 dollars. Yeah, that seems yeah. fine. And so multiply 117 dollars times 0 0.40, which is 40%. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you, and that'll give you what typical people will, you know, what, what was that? 40% uh, of seven. Yeah. $47. Yeah. So if all goes like it did last, so if all goes like it did last time, mm -hmm. you can pay up to $47 per lead. And so you're still way under that. So that's why, that's why I always have people go through that problem because like yeah, a lot sure. of people are like, I've got a high cost per lead. Well, the cost of ads right. have gone up, but what is your value per lead? That's a little bit more important okay. than worrying about the cost. Then my follow-up question is more important now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting enough leads. So I need more leads. And uh, I don't, it could be because, so like the cold leads, obviously they're coming in more. But when I, when I analyzed my launch last time and all my numbers and my ads last time, the cold leads obviously didn't convert like as well. So what type of funnel are you using? What are, remind me your, your funnel. <laughs> Okay. My funnel is a little messy. Um, so for my cold leads, I'm lookalike, lookalike audiencing people from my email list and from 30 days, I think it's 30 days active on my IG. Cause that's where most people are engaged. So it's like a lookalike audience. That's my cold. Then my warm. Is, right. But what's your funnel? What funnel, what type of funnel are you running? Like, like a, all of them. A <laughs> like webinar. Well, you should only have one. Funnel. Oh, oh, you mean for this one? Yes. It's a webinar funnel. Yes. It's a webinar. Funnel. webinar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. let me, let me get out my little. Okay. Like where are all the people going from these ads is what you're asking. Yeah. So yes, it's a webinar funnel. So they're going to go okay. to one. Yeah. A specific webinar. And then. Perfect. Cause that's what I got up in my little tool thing here. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So let's take it. So, so let's take it. So let's take a look at that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. we're going to do is we are going to, you guys want to get a little high level today. Let's do yes, this. Let's get I high like level. That. Let's get high level, but not the software high level. Um, no, I have nothing against go high level. I like it. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times people are like, well, with retargeting all of that retargeting and power content, that's all line up, right? A little something extra. What we want is a base funnel. How much is your, is your offer at the end of the funnel is Twelve ninety seven. Okay. Oops. Let's make that twelve ninety seven. Okay. Okay. So this is so this is what a, a a typical webinar funnel looks like. This is the what I work with typically with my with my agency clients. Um, so what we want is we want to push enough traffic, right? Whether you're doing Facebook or, or YouTube. Yeah. Um, right now I have this set to $4,000 ad spend and getting about $2 a click. Okay. So we're sending, so you can see here, right? To you guys can see my thing. Yeah. Okay. So 2000 visitors, we're sending 2000 visitors to this webinar opt-in page, right? Right, right? On average, we want about 30% of people to opt in. Some people make that 20%. Um, I like to get 
30%. Um, so that means out of the 2000 people, right? Out of the 2000 people that are going to opt in, mm -hmm. I mean, the 2000 people that are visiting, if 30% opt in, that's 600 people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next important thing is are out of the 600 people are at least 40% of them watching the webinar. That's super, super important, right? Because if 40% of the people are watching the webinar, mm -hmm. that means 240 people make it to the webinar, right? Yeah. They make it to it. Now that's not including how long they're watching or whatever, but only 250 typically industry standard mm -hmm. make it to even push play on the webinar, okay? Mm -hmm. Now out of the 240 people who push play on that webinar, what we're looking for is 10% of those people to fill out an application. Right. Okay. So now we're left with 24 people. Yeah. And then what, how usually when pe when it's us that are selling versus a salesperson, we can typically get 30% close rate. Our salespeople usually 20%. Like if you're the, the quote guru, even though I hate using that word. So this is what, so if I hit simulate right here, you'll see what this funnel should be where in order to be profitable cost per lead around six hundred six dollars and 66 cents um but you could profit four thousand eight hundred fourteen so we definitely would need to improve these numbers now this is with a four thousand dollar um ad spend okay because your traffic costs so you're making about ten thousand dollars mm -hmm. a, a little less um and you're spending four thousand so that's where you're left with the the profit, 4,814. So you know with a $4,000 ad budget, if these numbers check out, mm -hmm. that's what you can expect. Mm -hmm. Now, why my agency clients love me and my Lean on Laurel students love me is because this is the basic funnel, right? This, mm -hmm. is, this is what most people are running. I like, what I like to do is I like to plug any black holes, right? So that's where our power content, if we're running it top of funnel two, remember there's two ways that people can get the same content. Because remember, if only 30% are opting in, that leaves 70% of the people you're paying to click on this page, right. Right? right? So that's where I like to put the power content. I like to run it to both cold traffic and warm traffic of people who haven't opted in. Then what I do is I plug up this next hole right here, because remember 60% of people are never making it to the webinar. So that's why we got that fire four sequence. Then we're looking at 90% of the people who are watching the webinar, never make it to the application page. And that's where the hot seven goes. So that's why like my, my ecosystem that, that I, that I show you guys in the, in the very first video inside the seven dollar program that is how the ecosystem is built to do so that we can increase the profit. Because remember, all of these ads right here are $2 ads. They're the least expensive, but they're the most profitable. So when you see it laid out like this, you can see 70%, 60%, 90%, like hardly anyone's plugging those black holes. And that's where like most of the profit, that's where most of the profit is lying. So as long as, but here's the thing, this is what I tell people, we cannot rely on any of these things, we want the base funnel to at least perform profitable before we add any extra moving parts to it. Because a lot of what a lot of times people try to do is they try to add retargeting ads, hoping that it's going to make up for the funnel that doesn't work. And so that is why like this is kind of like the the minimum that I'm looking for as far as, you know, people coming through the funnel and making sure that are we getting 30 percent opt in opt in? Are we at least getting 40% of people to push play on the webinar? If that's not happening, we can't do anything else until we're dialed in that main funnel. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I'm like having a problem. Just like, I feel like my Facebook isn't even, I don't know if there's just not enough people in my warm, probably that I feel like I'm not even spending the budget I'm trying to spend to get. Yeah. Them. Your warm audience, like you don't want to run, like you want to run a webinar to cold traffic unless you have a very large warm audience. Um, I, I, no, it's not, it's like, it's not that large. <laughs> it's like a couple, it's like five to 10,000, but it's like how warm is warm, you know, like they've interacted with my Instagram before, or they've, yeah. they've like, you know, visited my Facebook or watched a video 15 seconds. Like I, it's not that big. So I put everyone in there together. Mm -hmm. So like whenever, like I get a client, the first, that's why I always have them set up with power content, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you've got power content going have, to cold. Yeah. Yeah. And you have webinar going to cold. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's two ways to enter the ecosystem because think about this. If people, let's say they land on the, the oops, wrong one. If they land on the landing page, right? We've got 70% of people who aren't opting in. Mm -hmm. Let's send them here. And if they watch at least 25% of one of these videos, because these videos right here, you want it to have the same content as your webinar. So right. we're going to hand feed the people in the webinar. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this here, right? For the people who opt in mm -hmm. and don't make it to the application page, let's mm -hmm. feed them bite-sized versions of the webinar. Right. That way we can use these people. Guess what? They watched at least one of those 25%. We're going to send those to the fire for as well. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing, they may not have opted in here. Maybe they don't have time for a webinar. Maybe they just, I don't know, like don't feel like watching a webinar. Let's try to qualify them one more time by sending them to power content. If they watch at least 25% of the video, right? Because it's the webinar content that qualifies them to move forward into the funnel. So they'll you they'll see the fire four, which is replays like little, little bite-sized versions of the webinar that get them to that next step. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. A lot of people have the misconception that I run power content just so that I can warm an audience, audience up for a webinar. And that's not true people get that mixed up. They're like, well, I've been running power content, you know, but larger brands do that. Like two years ago, I ran ads for Amy Port. I, well, you know, Amy, like I ran her, um, one of her affiliates ads for one of her launches back in two Septembers ago. Mm -hmm. And what Amy does is she runs power content nonstop building up a huge audience. And that way we don't send, like, she didn't want anyone that was cold coming into her five day challenge. Right. And so we spent a shit ton of money for three months before the launch, just building up these audiences. But I mean, we're talking about, you know, 500, 600,000 people oh my gosh. This before sending them to warm, but that was just how in depth she, that her team, I don't know about her. I never talked to her, but like her team wanted a huge warm audience Right. Um, it was like for her think like an expert. I think that was right. the, the launch. Um, but a lot of people think, oh, well, Laurel wants you to run power content so you can warm an audience up to send an offer. That's not true. We send, we send cold, we send offers to cold and we send them to warm because like until that balance is off, like cold's going to be much cheaper until you have a huge warm audience. Like I do, like I can put warm, like a webinar in front of my warm audience and I'm going to get opt-ins for like 25 cents, 30 cents for, you know, like wow. webinars. But it's because I built, I've spent so much time building up that warm audience. I think I gotta, yeah, I gotta, cause I I'm guess sorry, I, now I finally learned how to make the the power con uh, the power content. But now I'm like, put it on YouTube, and I'm like, oh, how do I? Should I just repost yes. it on Facebook and put it on YouTube? Yes, put it on YouTube because that Fire Four sequence. Yeah. If you have Google Tag Manager installed, I do. Yeah. That Fire Four sequence. That's why they get not only my retargeting ads on Facebook, they get them on YouTube, LinkedIn. Like that's right. what that that's what that purpose is for, is feeding them that extra content. But but yeah, we don't want to rely on retargeting. We want to make sure that that main funnel is dialed in. Yeah. But do you also take your YouTube videos and put them on Facebook or do you just, you have to, like, I use like, all the video. I use all the videos everywhere. So like the same video, like on exact both, I guess. same video. Yeah. I know you don't give a fuck. You're like, you're like on your podcast, like welcome back like to the show. And it's like, like you're on the, it's a YouTube, uh, same thing from YouTube. I do. I, I stream all of my content to one, like to one, one single thing. I don't know. Yeah. There's no sense in overcomplicating it. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I think I've been doing. Cause I'm like afraid. I'm like, Oh, I can't use the YouTube. Cause I've mentioned all the YouTube links and comments and you know, I'm like, oh. who gives a care, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> because I just feel like I've been building this whole warm audience just cause I did organic marketing in the beginning and then I never use it. So I have like these people that I never go back to. And I'm like, it's so stupid. I need to start sending them videos, sending them something, but that's smart. Okay. I'll just focus on maybe plugging yep. holes. I think. Yeah. Cause like, we'll make sure that main, remember before you can d plug holes, you have to make sure that main funnels dialed in. Don't spend, yeah. like, spend all, like if I were you, yeah. I would literally spend all your time making sure that that webinar funnel is dialed in without emails, without retargeting, like that 40% mm. are making it to the, to watch the webinar. That's the hardest thing is because look, here's, here's what a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. People think Facebook ads are the hardest part. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like in lean on Laurel, I was like, no, like, let me do your ad setups 
And we're going to get to your, get to the, the main thing faster. And so now in Lean on Laurel, I do their ad setups because I want them to get to the part where you are to where we could actually see how people are moving through the funnel. Because most people think the hardest part is Facebook ads. Facebook ads only reveal the real problem that you're going to find in your funnel. And that is getting people to watch the webinar and getting people to move through the rest of the funnel. Yeah. Cause my webinar is live though. So it's a little bit hard. It's not like, Oh, I just want them to hit play. It's like, I want them to show up. You want them to show up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But live webinars convert so much better than evergreen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't hands I, down. Yeah. I did evergreen for like a hot minute on a different product. And I was like, this is horrible. And I don't want to do this at all. I was it like, takes a lot it. of practice. Like I always make my <laughs> students do it live at least eight to 10 times. Yeah. I agree. Time. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause I don't, I felt like I didn't know anything when I went to Evergreen. I was like, oh no, I need to go back to live. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yep, I make yeah. them do it live and I make them do phone calls. I don't care how little their pricing is. I make them do it live and I make them do phone calls. Oh my gosh. Oh, because when you do, when you're forced to do phone calls, you're forced to hear the objections. And then therefore it makes the webinar better and better and better because then you can oh. work in those objections into the webinar or the live workshop. Good point. Good point. But, but for those who do, like, I've got a client who does a live workshop. She Mm -hmm. just sells them directly because she's on answering like the live Q and a, um, so if you're doing like a live and you want to move them to the sale, that's fine because you're there with the Q and a, but when you're doing it like evergreen, I always like one, do it live a whole bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Then when you get that, do it evergreen, but still take the calls. Mm -hmm. Then once you've got it to where like, okay, the calls are going great. People aren't having issues buying. Then you're ready to completely automate the entire thing where you don't have to do phone calls and you don't have to do it live. Mm -hmm. It's a process. It's a, it's it's a process. Thank you. Is that clear? Did that get, did that answer all your. Yeah, it did. But I'm just like, I, I guess my, my big issue now is retargeting. I haven't really dove in to figure out how retargeting's changed since iOS updates. So I'm a little bit worried, like, how can I actually retarget the people that have opted in? I don't have enough of them that I could upload the emails. So here's what, here's what you do. This is a cheat. Like I do this whenever like clients lose ad accounts or whatever. And they're like, oh, my pixel data. I was like, well, we've been running ads and anyone who's engaged with your page or any ad in the last 365 days encompasses everybody. Oh, the, the page, Mm -hmm. it like it, the ads act as the page. Like if they're well, well, that your ads being ran from your page. So yeah. if they come an ad, that means it's engaged. They've engaged with your page. So mm. if you use in, but you have to switch it. it. It'll say anyone who's engaged with your page, toggle it. It'll say anyone who's engaged with your page or any ad in the last 360. Oh, okay. Let me see. I, I, I utilize know. every nook and cranny of the Facebook ads. Yeah. Platform. Cause I'm like, how am I going to retarget them if they, like everything's changed. I don't know. Yeah, most of my stu- most of my students when they run retargeting, I have them run it to two audiences. One, um, all pixel data, so anyone who's visited any part of the website, and two, yes. anyone who's engaged with their page in the last 365 days, because yeah. like the audience is much bigger. And then as they start running more and more traffic, we start doing anyone who's engaged with 90 days, anyone who's oh. visited your, your website, and so that's how. But we start with anyone who's engaged with our page in the last 365 days or visited my website in the last 180. Yeah. I want to do some power content. That's like, see you at the launch party, <laughs> like, you know, like just to make sure they show up, like put it in your calendar, please come. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, like that's what, that's what I love about that fire four sequence, especially for a live webinar, because it yeah. reminds them, yeah. Hey, this is coming. This is coming up. This is what we're going to be going through. Like you don't yeah. want to miss it show up live and I'm going to give you this free thing. I don't know, like show something like if you show up live, everyone, everyone who shows up live is going to get this free thing. Not this, this is like a calendar, but you know, (laughs) get something (laughs) from my local bank. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yeah. Fire four. I got to write this in my planner and write this down working on fire four and fire four is just power content with a CTA with a what? It's power content with a call to action. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, like no call, no call, no call, call. Got it. Yep. So like, if you're doing the fire four, you would probably want to be like, don't forget my webinar, blah, 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 blah. Here's the link again, in case you didn't register or in case like you, you know, or if you want, like, I even have one 
that's like, hey, the webinar is coming up, but if you have a hair on fire problem and you want help right now, book a call. Mm. So I have some, I have some people that use it that way. Um, that's what I love about ads. Like I just like, just, just use do whatever it. you want. <laughs> Use it to talk to your audience how, and say whatever you want. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I get into my head too much. Mm-hmm. Most I'm people like, do. Most yeah. people do. They're, they they spend time writing ad copy. I'm like, just turn on the camera, talk to your audience and place it, get it over with. Yeah. Even in email, I feel like I used to write my emails like today we are going to learn like the five ways to make a toy. And then lately I've just been like, so yesterday was a hard day, but I made this podcast for you and people love it. They're like, oh my God, it's okay. Michelle. You'll be fine. You know, it's like, it's like, oh my gosh. Yes. People yeah. love off the, cuff, off the cuff stuff like that. Yeah. I find that when you like dress up ads or like you make it too formal, I think people just don't relate to them because they're so, I think, I think there's like a switch happening right now where people are really tired of these big box coaches. Like yes. people want the like engagement, with, like, the real people. Yeah. yeah. Cause as you can see, like a lot of gurus, I won't mention names, but there's a couple <laughs> that I'm like looking at and I'm like, what the, like they must be hurting in their business. Cause they're like doing something completely different than what they would have totally done in the past. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone told me like, you can't keep live launching. That's a terrible idea. And I just knew from the beginning, I was like, people want to learn from me with me. And it's not about just like sign up here and never see me again. Like, no, they want. They yeah. Want I always call. laugh at the people who are like, I don't want to do sales calls. Oh my God. Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I honestly though, I'm bad at sales calls. I'm the worst. I like, don't close them because then I talk to them and they're like, I don't know. I don't think it's for me. And I'm like, you know what? Don't buy. I'm like, I'm like, you can buy next year. It's okay. I'll, I'll open it next year. Don't you worry. Don't rush. You know, like, I'm the worst. No, but that's good because it like, and it's, it's one of those things I was actually, um, I had an, a VIP half office day with, um, one of my lean on Laurel clients today. Mm-hmm. And they were telling me, his team was telling them the same thing that like, they suck at sales calls. Right. And I was like, it's because it was because they're trying to bust objections. I was like, stop trying to bust objections. I was like, because like, if you bust an objection, it might work short term and they might, you might get them to buy, but they're going to be the worst clients because you haven't, right. you haven't eliminated the false belief. You've only busted an objection. Right. Oh, and so like, like, th- like, think about this and this will be good. Cause I know, um, Let's see who's here. Oh, I see Phyllis. Phyllis has her hand up. Um, like I'll, I'll actually use an example for Phyllis. So let's say Phyllis has a fitness, um, offer, right. And she gets, she gets someone on the phone and it's this mom and she's, you know, she wants to lose weight. And the mom tells her that, well, I don't really, I don't really have the money for your program right now. Mm-hmm. And Phyllis does everything that she can to bust that objection. Like, you know, do it for yourself, you know, like you're worth it and blah, 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 blah. And so let's say the, the fitness, uh, she buys the fitness offer. That person's going to get off the phone and feel all kinds of guilty because they just spent the money because Phyllis didn't talk her through the, the false belief that she had that, because think about this, if like, when most people say they don't have the money, it's not that they're poor or their, their mindset's bad, or it's mostly because of a legitimate reason of something that's going on in their life. Right. Yeah. And so if you can talk people through that. So instead of saying, well, you know, you're worth it. And, you know, busting all these objections about money, it's like, well, tell me about like, what makes you think that, you know, you can't spend the money. Like, tell me a little bit about like what, what, what your daily life is like. And maybe she comes to find out that maybe her daughter is having a birthday party coming soon. And she doesn't feel like, you know, she could spend money with Phyllis because she's got to spend money on her daughter. And then like mm. Phyllis, you know, bust through all these objections. And then now this person is left, well, shit, I just spent $3,000 and so-and-so has got a party coming up. I'm an awful mom. Uh, and then that person's never going to be a great client because they're going to have all this guilt that's associated with that buy. And we don't yeah. want guilt. And a lot of people with the, like get guilted into buying these high ticket programs. I have. <laughs> and then, and then don't, it makes you feel like shit. And then you just, you just feel all the, this like heavy guilt energy and your the vibe's just not there. And those are the people that will ask for refunds. Those are the people that will never show up to do the work. Those are. And so that's why I always say, don't bust objections. Let's get to, down to the false beliefs and see if we can help them work through that. And if not, you know what, 
be transparent and say, you know what, if you've got a daughter's birthday coming up and there's no other financial way that you could do this, then let's revisit this at another time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So true. Phyllis, I see your hands up. What's up? First, I want to say I love that little coaching piece you just gave me. You didn't even know you were talking to me. <laughs> I, was was making awesome. shit. I was just making shit up. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you, those are the women that do ask for refunds. They do chargebacks or they don't ever do anything. And they have a bad taste for you in their mouth and they don't recommend you. So you're right. Chargebacks um, are the worst too, because oh, that, it, that oh. takes, you take hits on your Stripe account. And I am like, Ooh. It charges your fee if you get a chargeback. Oh, really? I like, yeah, I can't even remember how much it was, but I tried to prove that the lady agreed to it and they they didn't side with me. So I was like, okay, well, there you go. There's that. <laughs> so, but anywho, I've made a little shift in my business. So, you know, I was running the lead ad, yep. which uh i've gotten something like 150 whatever free meal plan leads none have converted yet so i want to drop the amount that i'm spending on that and do a um an ad for <laughs> my new hormone program <laughs> okay so tell, so tell me so <clears throat> so before you like completely do like a, a 180 so, because I know you were doing lead form and then you were calling people, correct? Yes. And I booked one Zoom call and she no showed. Mm -hmm. um, several people were like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, another, there's a couple wrong numbers. Some poor guy, it was like, I keep getting these calls for this woman. <laughs> so that's how that's going. So, so what is, what is the ultimate goal? Like, I know you're, you were running like Make the lead money. forms, like you, cause you want to sell your program, don't you? Yes. So the goal with the lead ad was to get them into my funnel and get them on a call so I can find out how I can best serve them. Cause I have several programs. Um, and that's, that's going very slowly. So I thought, well, this new hormone program could be really big and it's, um, I don't know. Anyway, it could be really big. So, and my idea is I've dropped the price of it because I'm bringing them all into, I kind of took your little idea on this. I'm bringing them all into a paid Facebook group where I do the weekly lives on hormones. They get meal plans, they get um, grocery lists. We talk about all that stuff. So, and it's very low. It's like $57 a month. It's a six month commitment, but if I can get a hundred women in there, you know what I mean? And if I get more, I can hire help to help me with it. So that's the idea is mm -hmm. to put my resources there. So do you need, even cash, do you need, do you, do you, do you need cash flow or yes. do you just want to, so that is like the, because you would need to build an audience, right? You don't, have, do, or do you have an audience, like a decent size? I do have an audience. Um, I am in this huge Facebook group, but these women are not converting very well. I've done a few lives about the program um, and I've done, I've dabbled in content ads over the last couple of years. So I was looking at that account before I, I uh, came onto the call and there's, there's one where there's something like, there's at least four videos where people have watched more than 25% of it. Mm -hmm. So I thought to just retarget those people and retarget the free meal plan video people all my ads are videos just about all of them okay because i feel like you need volume and yeah. if you and and getting volume with a low ticket offers like the the low ticket offers are the most expensive and hardest to dial in yeah right here's what i would think about doing i would think about doing a challenge to get people into that into that membership that way you can do two things at one time, build a list and build some education. Cause it sounds like people need to be educated a little bit about your offer. Otherwise I would say do a mini webinar into your hormone prop program because building a low ticket Facebook group is going to be a lot of work and a lot of money to build from scratch. Cause you're looking at probably paying for a $57 a month membership. You're probably going to end up paying a hundred, $120 per customer acquisition. Wow. So you're probably going to, so, 
you know me, I just keep it real. Yeah. Um, because like, I, that's why I like, I always advise when people want cash flow to stay away from low ticket offers. Yeah. Okay. So, so think of it. So think about this, right? Okay. So how much is it? I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. How much is your hormone program? Um, so total in the six months, it comes out to 342 and it could be whatever I want it to be. It's, it's however I want to, mm -hmm. however I want to position it. And I thought low ticket, get a lot of people in, make some money. And then low ticket, low ticket is typically. So whenever we're talking about like low ticket offers, we're usually talking about a way to scale. Cause like, think about this. If you're, I always say go for cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. Like ask me this, if we got 1000 eyeballs onto your 342 offer or your $57 a month offer, do you think like we could spend, you know, like three to $4 per lead for that, right? Well, how much were you paying per lead on your other offer? Um, Oh, I don't remember. I know I was paying, I was spending $10 a day. I think it was like two, 221, something like that. Right. So let's say that we spend $500 with Facebook ads as leads to get people into a challenge. Okay. That'll give you a thousand people. Let's say we a thousand people to get into a challenge, which probably only 200 people or whatever is actually going to show up. And what do you think would be a better way to spend money? getting 1000 eyeballs on your offer or paying a hundred and something dollars to acquire a $57 a month customer. What do you, what do you think would, right? Right. So what kind of ad So I would I say like when you're going for volume, right? You want people to see that, like how could we create a stream, a pipeline of people to see this offer? Because if you're hiding, if you're going to try to sell it, like with a $57, less people are actually going to see it because of the cost oh. of your ads. Okay. I haven't even, okay. So what kind of ad would I run that? I'm wondering, so they don't even know how much it is, the way the ad is set up and it hasn't been approved yet. Um, but the way the ad is set up, I'm just talking about hormones and, and getting relief and what they get in the program. So what and is I, the very, so in your program, what is the very first action that they have to overcome until they're like, okay, it is my hormones. Like, like, do people understand that it's our hormones or do they just, so they, they're problem aware. So the way I've worded this ad is they know, they know this is targeted for women who know I'm going through perimenopause or menopause. They already know. Okay. What is the, what is the very first thing that like, once people come into this program, what is the mm -hmm. very first small win that you can help them do so as soon as they they come in it's like hell yeah like phyllis helped me do this like within the first week um just being able to nail down what their symptoms are that's really the first thing is we go through all that so they're able to say oh yeah these are these are clearly my symptoms and now i have a step-by-step -step system because it's i take them through a 12-week step system for them to start eliminating the things causing so we get rid of processed food first. Well, we go through the the symptoms, then we get rid of the processed foods that are associated to those symptoms. Because I'm wondering if you can either, because you, you've got one or two ways when you when you go through volume like this. One, I the, the path that I would do is I would probably do like a three-day challenge or something so that you can spend some time with people over Zoom, right? Hmm. Spend some time with them, like, like kind of like how we're spending time here. And have yeah. like a very specific thing, like over the next three days, I'm going to help you, you know, day one, we're going to do this day two, we're going to do this and day three, because when you're sending ads to something like that, you're going to go for volume because if, if you can get a hundred women or a hundred people on a zoom call, how many of those people do you think that you could sell into the $57 membership? That I don't know. I would have to see, I, I think with something as specific as hormones, they they know so they're like okay i want relief so i think I, I think i could convert at least half of them yep what i would what i would do is i would start with your organic audience and say hey if oh if i did a free three-day workshop and we would accomplish this and this is what it would look like how many of you guys would join me on zoom for three days in order to accomplish that test it with your warm audience because you said you have a decent warm audience 
yeah see how they see how they react to it and if it's like okay cool i would i would do this then you can turn it into an ad to cold so 750 people clicked on that landing page because i'm in a i'm in this big group and i targeted these women and i i, I the way i worded the um the post was i created this hormone program steps to blah 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 who wants it so almost a thousand women said yes of course because they thought it was free and then when they clicked on i got 750 of them to click on the landing page so is it too late to now go in there and say okay let's take it actually i don't think it is to say hey let me walk you through three days of this for free yep absolutely because if you had seven think about that that was an hour 700 people would have said yes to a free three-day challenge where you could have spent time with them and that's where i always ask people is like if you're going for volume get as many people in in a room for free have a conversation that's going to be much faster than trying to sell each in one person at a time into a 57 dollar offer but i've even gone live in there several times to talk about it and they're just not buying mm -hmm. i think they want it for free mm -hmm. but that's a good test to see like whether or not people are gonna because during the challenge you're going to spend time with people and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do research. Hey, if I offered, you know, this course and it's $342, how many of you guys would buy it? Okay. What if instead of charging you $342, what if I turned it into a monthly of $57? How many of you guys would buy it? You see how I'm taking, I'm taking them through like the process because this first thing that you do, you want to not worry necessarily about making X amount of money. You want to worry about validating this offer, right. especially if you have a, like if you have a, a Facebook group that you can utilize before you even spend money on ads, that's even better. But what, what you want to do is validation and you need to spend time with your ideal audience to see if they'll even pay $57 a month for that. Right. So it's not too late to go back to them, no. even though I've done not that, they know the price. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I would even go back to each one of those people and say, hey, um, did you talk to them through Messenger or you just gave them the link? Well, it's Facebook? in the Facebook group, so I was responding to messages and dropping the link. But with Facebook, if you respond to too many messages, mm -hmm. they block you and you can't respond. And I got about... 85 of them on my email list with a questionnaire, but I even emailed them and said, hey, we restructured this to make it more accessible. It's now 57 a month. No response. Yeah, so that, that's all we need is just to validate, but we need people to validate that. So that would be that would be what I would do is I would do some kind of now it could be a free train, like a free live webinar. It could be a three day challenge. All I know is like in the fitness niche or like the health niche, people like like cha like challenges. I don't know. It's, it feels actionable, um, but it's up to you, right? Because you can do whatever the hell you want. You're you're in control. You're in the, you're the business owner, right? So I would say like what, but we need we need a way for you to spend time with people so that we can answer those questions. Right. So don't run the ad, or if I do run it as a free three day hormone challenge. Mm hmm. But I would have a very specific outcome, right? In the next three days, you're going to learn X, Y, and Z. And also, we have to be careful because hormones help, like, it is a health related yeah. thing. So we yeah. have to be very three days, you know, three days to, you know, this, this, you know, would have would have to would have to be careful with how we word it. So run that by me before. Flag by Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But the good news is, if you don't run ads to it, you could say whatever you want. Can I boost the post? It's still an ad. It's still an ad. Yeah, boosted posts are just ads with expiration dates on them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does that make sense, though? I know it sounds. I know it sounds like. Okay. I, I know. I know you want to just spend money on ads, but I don't. I want to spend money on something that's going to bring me a return now. My yeah. savings are dwindling. Yes, exactly. And I just. I. That's why I'm. That's why I wanted to figure out a free way for you to get some cash flow, maybe get a quick win, and then we could revisit it. So what I would do is I would put together whether it's a free training, free challenge, however you want to do it, but you need to get as many women to spend time with you on Zoom so that you can ask them and you can present the offer to them. 
and listen. And, and if they're like, and if you hear crickets, be like, hey, I'm, I'm, new, I'm new to this offer. Can you guys just kind of give me some feedback on what I could do to make this offer more enticing? Um, do you guys think that, you know, this isn't worth paying for? Like, don't, like, don't be afraid. Like a lot of people are very open to critiquing. Things. Yeah. They like, they um, like them. so I think you're, I think that's going to give you a lot of data. Um, like whenever I was creating the $7 program, like that's why I talked to so many people. Like this was the last thing I created. Cause I didn't know, like there's so many people who offer ad programs. What could I do different? I inverted the high ticket model, right? I, I gave a high ticket program away for a low ticket price, but I didn't know if people would listen to me. So I had to talk, I had talked to a lot of people. Like I sold the program um, seven, not seven, 400 times. 400 wow. people in messenger. Nina probably remembers this because Nina has been with me since the very beginning. But like I sold this program 400 times in messenger talking to people before I ever ran a single ad for it. That was a yeah, lot of times. Yes, yeah. I even <laughs> talked to you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Nina? I even talked to you. You and I had a... Oh, that's your, right. I did. I your, talked to Nina yeah, on the phone. Your mentor had you talk to 100 people on the phone. So I was yep. one of those people. Holy crap. Yep. <laughs> so real quick, can I just do like a content ad? Where'd she go? Uh-oh, there you are. I saw the screens move. Can I just do like a content ad where the call to action is to get a hormone cheat sheet and then I can just do the conversations? Yep, absolutely. I think you I just need to have as many conversations as possible. That would like, here's my challenge to you. I'm not going to give you the same challenge my mentor gave me. He was like, get on the phone with 70 people for 20 minutes each. Free strategy sessions. I was like, man, I wish I would have known her back then. <laughs> Um, but I, I, don't have, I don't have the knowledge I have now, right? Like uh, two years later, like, you know, uh, oh my gosh. Like, I mean, I'm so, Nina probably even sees, saw me grow. Cause I, I know so much more now than I did back then, especially about the online business space. But I would, I would challenge you, Phyllis, to talk to a hundred people in the next 30 days, whether that's over the phone, whether that's through messenger, however, do a post on your thing that says, you know, I, I'm thinking of doing this, like, you know, how many of you guys would, I would try everything to talk to a hundred people in messenger. So Laurel, can I just give a little insight into why Absolutely. that is really helpful? So I work with attorneys, I work with immigration attorneys, and I have answered phones in immigration attorneys law offices so that I know what people are saying when they are calling an immigration attorney and then I write their video scripts and I get them a lot of views because I'm using the language they use. So that's why Laurel's telling you this, not for any other reason, except that you need to talk in the, what they're saying. So, so I'm right, Laurel? totally down, totally down for that. But I think my only question is, how am I getting in them on the phone and what am I talking to? I'm talking to them about the hormone program. What am I asking? Is there yeah. like a template somewhere? <laughs> so what you need, so what you need to do is like figure out one, how sophisticated is your audience? Like, do they know that these symptoms equal harm, like this hormone thing, right? That's first and foremost, do people have clarity on the problem that you're trying to solve? The next thing is you need to get on the phone and see how they themselves describe their problem. They might not even use the word hormones to describe their problem at all. Like it might just be, you know, I'm feeling like X, Y, and Z. Um, another thing, another reason to talk to them is figuring out if your audience has this hormone problem as a hair on fire problem, or it's like, oh, it's just my hormones, right? Because one audience is willing to pay you and the other audience is not. I have, so I have a lean on Laurel client and she works with parents who have challenging kids. Like we're not talking like where she's like, and this is what she was saying the other day. She's like, well, she's like, I, I, I do help parents sometimes like, you know, parents who have unruly kids who are, you know, throwing temper tantrums in Walmart. Um, she's like, I can help those parents. Um, but she's like, I really, you know, shine with the parents who have mentally challenged kids who are literally like, you know, they can't going to bed is a constant struggle every night. 
I said, yeah, I said, but here's the thing, just because you can help the woman whose kids are screaming and crying in Walmart, throwing a temper tantrum, that mother doesn't have a hair on fire problem. The mother with the mentally challenged child who is, you know, can't have a, a decent bedtime routine every night, pulling her hair out, crying while the kid is at, you know, with their, their trainer at school and just kind of like at their wits end, not knowing what to do. That person will pay you almost anything just to make that problem go away. Whereas someone with an unruly kid, I was like, so, so do you feel this? That's, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand is like, we have to figure out what type of person is willing to pay for the problem that you're solving. Just because you can solve a problem doesn't mean that people have that initial hair on fire problem for you to solve it, right? Because you could talk to a lot of women who have hormone problems, but if it's not a huge problem in their daily life and it's not that hair on fire problem, then they might be like, eh, I'd rather spend 50 to $7 on something else. Right. So, okay. so that's why I'm telling you to have conversations with, because you want to figure out hormones are a hair on fire problem, but I don't think women would identify that the hormones itself is a hair on fire problem. You have to get to the symptom that's causing the hair on fire problem. Right. Hot flashes and night sweats and such. (laughs) Okay. All right. Back to square one. Thank you. No, you're not back to square one. Don't ever think of that. Like this is all, this is all a learning experience and we all go through it. Like we all go through this with our offers And that's one of the first things that we have to do is just like talk to our audience and get that research. Um, Because who knows your other offer that you, that you're, that you've been trying to sell might be a good offer. You just haven't done enough research on it. Right. Okay. Because you have a couple of different offers. Well, yeah, it's all weight loss and nutrition, but it's just, you know, how it shows up on different people, you know? Mm -hmm. So would you say like your, like your target audience is older women? That's just who gravitates to me for some reason. Uh, women over 40 and between 40 and like 60, for whatever reason, they gravitate to me. I, I don't know why. That's, that's And I work better with them. Younger women and it's I don't great, really. It's a great niche though, because. Yeah, because they have um, disposable income. <laughs> yeah, well, they've got disposable income. They're going through menopause. They're going through a lot of changes with their body. Right. And the, the angle that you could utilize. Cause like, if you're, Phil, you're Phyllis, you're the, the health coach for women over 50, right? Like you could actually say like, let's, let's get your body in check so that you can enjoy the rest of your life, not end up suffering the rest of your, you know? So there's different angles that you could take once you're like officially like right the, I'm the, the women over 50 coach, you know, like, you know, I, I think you should come up with some type of like, to where like when people see you, they're like, oh yeah, that's, she specifically works with women over 50 because that's a great niche to be in. Right. And that's sort of what my messaging has naturally gravitated towards is longevity. So I, I lift weights not because I want to look a certain way. I lift weights because I want to be able to get up and down from off the floor. So that's been my, <laughs> a lot of my messaging. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, those are, like I said, that's a great niche and like own it, like just completely own it. Yeah. I think that's been my issue, not owning that and just unapologetically like this is it this is what you're gonna get this is who i am so yeah maybe ask their husband if he's done with the- <laughs> <laughs> i think that i wasn't supposed to read that out loud okay thank you <laughs> awesome let's see we will wrap things up with as far did i say your name right yeah that's good that's good laurel great to see you, awesome. to see you. yes um yeah, so that was a great conversation. So sort of hearing what's going on there. Uh, actually, there was one just just one thing on that conversation that you said, you know, to uh, post something to get people to have these free calls, hundred calls. I wasn't clear where where you were saying to post that. What? Yep. So um, I did that on all on my profile. So if we like, let's rewind back to two thousand. <laughs> we're gonna rewind back to two thousand eighteen. So at that time, I didn't have a Facebook business page. I just had my Facebook profile. That was it. Um, I didn't even have an Instagram account. Like that's how, that's how like, and it was just like Facebook. Um, I just like started building up my audience. I had gone through this training where like they taught, you know, how to go into Facebook groups, give value and add people. I I was adding like 30 to 50 people a day to the point where Facebook after about two weeks just started delivering all these coaches and fitness coaches, like all coaches of all types straight 
just started suggesting friends to me. And I'm like, I don't even have to go searching anymore. Facebook's just delivering them. And I'm just add friend, add friend, add friend, add friend. But one of the things that I made absolute sure, and this is super, super important, is that when I would add someone as a friend, what's the first thing you do? You go look at their profile, right? I made sure that my profile was as helpful as freaking possible. I, I went live and Nina probably remembers this every single day. I would go live. I still had a nine to five job. I'd go live at 5 a.m. in the morning, Phoenix time. Yes, it um, was dark out. She would do it. Was, it. Yeah. it was and they would out. watch, she they would watch the sun out. come up behind me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, but that's what I did. I literally, but because I wanted to make sure that whenever they visited my profile, that video would be the first thing that they saw and that it was super valuable. And so people just started watching my videos to where it was like an everyday thing, ha having coffee with Laurel. And I wasn't dressed up or anything like this was before I would get dressed to go to work. And it would, and I just kept doing that and doing that. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm getting a lot of people like talking to me. I was like, I'm going to get a mentor. And then I hired a mentor and he was like, you need to be talking to these people. Cause I didn't have an offer. I was like, well, I'm going to do Facebook ads for them or whatever. And he's like, well, what, then what you could only take on so many clients. And I'm like, I don't know. And so he's like, let's talk to people, figure out what they want. And he's like, I'm going to challenge you to talk to like 70 to hundred people, you know, for 20 minutes. And remember I had a full-time job at this time. So I had to make it, I had to make it happen, but just doing that built my business. Like I hit, I hit my first six figures in less than a year. I started in April like really going boss the wall with my mentor in April. It was my, I never forget because I spent the $5,000 because it was my birthday. I put it on my credit card. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy myself this birthday gift. If this business doesn't work out, whatever, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it by November. That's all I did. And by November, I was able to put in my two week notice. And I still at this time had not made a business page yet. Keep that in mind. I just all profile, Facebook profile, and I launched my $7 program in November. I had 200 people sign up. I had already people in my 45 day um, accelerator, the coaching program. That's how I got from talking to people all within like a very short months, only using Facebook live. That's it. And Google documents. I didn't even have a funnel like Facebook live to Google document to, a, I never forget Google forms didn't even, in, even exist yet. It was called one, two, three form builder.com or something. It was this free form builder. And I would wow. get on the phone and it was just, they would pay, I would send them a PayPal link if they wanted me to do their ads for them. You guys are going to laugh. You want to know how much I charge for my first ad client ever? I don't know if I want to know this. $150 a month. Oh my God. And then, so now you guys have like the full scale of like, I literally built, like whenever I say that I was in the trenches building my business, like everything that I tell you guys to do is nothing that I'm like shortcut. Like I, I can shortcut it for you guys because I, I've went the slow way for eight months, but like, I, it, nothing beats like having conversations with people. But so as oh, far as what I, you. if I recall correctly, what Laurel talked to me about was like where I was in my business and where I wanted to go. And so if that's what you're asking, like what you would ask or what you would talk to people about, is that no, what you're just um because I, I wasn't quite clear where the, where the post was going but i think that that was that, that helps to fill in a few gaps there if you have a few ideas about how i can do that um actually i've been running ads for quite a while i've been running my program for uh several years now um you know i've worked with 30 or 40 founders i'm, I'm working with tech guys who are trying to launch tech and get that running and um the the kind of the the challenge that i have i think overall if i'm really sort of just you know looking objectively is that um, there is a big, big future problem, which is that 97% of these companies fail, right? The problem is that, um, that you know, it's like short term, people will say they don't have a problem. So there's, it's hard to find that kind of hair on fire problem. Most people will say they need funding or they need something mm -hmm. else. Um, and then most people will kind of like try to hold on to their cash. They will just try to pick up tips here and there and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So what would you say, what would you say is the main problem that you solve? Well. Again, it's that it's the fact that people approach the whole thing completely in the wrong way. They they just start building software, for example, right? Or they do something else completely wrong. And so the first thing is to is to is to streamline their sort of like way they're going to market. Uh, so that's why I put this um, I put a framework together around this. So it's like 
um, there are you know stages through doing this properly. And so, so would you say like you're a marketing strategist for tech companies? Uh, I would say it's more it's it's I call it commercialization. Okay. You, know, you could you could build software, but then the question is how are you going to get this to market? Who are you going to sell it to? How are you going to raise funding for it? How are you going to get to mm. a very specific um, promise that I have built into this is that I help you get to a hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue, right? With with some other key metrics as well. So a hundred k a hundred k month profit for tech companies revenue. or revenue. revenue? Yeah. And so what is what is your mechanism that you're able to do that? So that's the framework I put together. I mean, I can show it to you if you like. Yeah, um, let's yeah, let's take a look at it. In fact, I, I pulled up my um, yeah. Okay, I'll, let me just show it to you. It's, yeah. Um, hold on one second. One second. So, um, here we go. Can you see that now? Sure can. Yeah, so um, at the beginning, I was just really focused on funding with people. And the problem I found was that usually the problem's not around funding, actually. It's not like they just can't, they say they just want investors, but actually all the other stuff is broken. That's why they're not actually able to get funding. So over these few years, I kind of figured out, you know, through a lot of research that you've got to, you know, you've got to focus on cash flow. You've got to understand that really well in the business. You've got to understand your offer. You've got to, you've got to understand how you're going to attract customers in. You've got to um, understand how you're going to build what I call repeatability, but it's mostly basically operational stuff. And all of that together is going to lead you to the, to the result, right? So this is now my framework for this. Um, this is so freaking bomb. Like, if I were you, I would literally go live every day and teach a small portion of this, like I would nonstop, like I would just take this, I would even print it out. I would, I would even put it like on a white, like put little things like on a whiteboard and I would literally teach this and just like move people to messenger yeah. or move them to a call. Like that's all I would so, do. Like I would, I would break it up like into small chunks. Yeah. So like, I've, been, I've been following your, uh, your strategies actually. So I've been. I've been, uh, I put some power content together around that. Um, I'm running this ad right now, which um, is actually seem, seems to be doing okay. Like I got quite a few leads, right? And, uh, and now I've been building out my kind of uh, email sequence that kind of goes on the back of this, because I think the, 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 the way I'm trying to solve this is to say, look, I've got to educate people on what this is all about. But, you know, tech founders are, are quite kind of, um, they're quite kind of a, uh, they like to be quite discreet, you know, they're kind of in the background. They don't, it's really hard to get them to book a call, right? Because they just want to, they want to make their decision before they get on the call. Well, that, that's why I was about to say a mini webinar would be perfect for this offer because you can say the three accelerators that will explode your new tech company, like, and then like 10 minute mini webinar, like explaining, like going through this entire framework and then just moving people to a call if they're interested in you working with them to build this. Yeah. So right now I'm running a webinar um, ad. So I've got, I've got a, this, this um, conversion. Yep, let's say, yeah. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this from start to kind of like start with the, the Facebook ad and let's go into the landing page. Okay, sure. Um, so this is, well, actually this is the lead, the, the ad that I just showed you goes to a lead form. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I have that actually here. Um, but you're giving them a free framework visual app. That's very different than getting someone into a webinar. Yeah, so I have, I have these different strategies going. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so what I was, I put a, so this is the actual, um, so I, I offer this for free and I, and I put this together, which is kind of like my uh, interpretation of your companion guide. So I'm basically mm -hmm. doing, that's what I, I have, a, I have three other companion guides that I put together. Like one is a, like a sales plan thing, but this is the, for the visual map. And so they come down here and they sort of see it, they can click on here and it opens up full, full image. And I kind of show this and then I kind of um, suggest they go to the Facebook, you know, sign up for the Facebook group. I would, I would literally replace all of this with a mini webinar funnel, like super freaking easy. 
Like, I mean, I think that it's good that you're doing like that you, that you have all of this, but I would start with the basic funnel that what I showed a a while ago. Yeah. I I would do mini webinar and teach your, your three accelerators to grow to exploding a tech company or or something like that. Like, however you want to say it, but I, I love that you have that framework and I would literally go through that. Like, and just yeah. get, because here's the difference between someone who wants a free thing versus I'm interested. Like if I offered to help you build your tech company and get it to six figures in the first month, would you take me up on that offer? Right. You're getting people to raise their hand saying, yes, I want what as far as getting, and I'm willing to get on the phone to see how, or I'm willing to watch this many webinars so I could see his framework. If I like what I see, I'll be willing to get on the phone and close. That's what you want. You want people who are ready to close on the phone. So you wouldn't, especially you wouldn't for offer, this type of offer. You wouldn't offer this for free, then you mean you wouldn't offer the. No, the yeah, I would run ads. I would run ads to, to a, a, a webinar like this, but I would do a mini webinar where I'm just going over the framework. Here's how I work. Here's the results that I've been able to get from my other clients. Yeah. Here's my offer. Let if you if you qualify, book a free strategy call here. Yeah make it super, super easy. That would be my base funnel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, you have all of the, you have all of the moving parts. I think you just need to be a, a little bit more aggressive in your marketing. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because, because think also- about this people, you don't need to educate people on this. Like tech companies that want to, to grow, they, you know how we were talking about hair on fire problems. Like if you, t- if, if I'm a new tech company, you, you tell me that you want to show me a framework that's going to get me to a hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue. You have my probably, attention. You don't probably, need to educate. It's probably not going to happen in a month, but it will. Um... Well, no, that's what I'm saying. A hundred K months as you know, as soon as possible or. Yeah, in the, yeah. But I mean, you would, you would have my ear like, very simple not not, wouldn't take me much convincing yeah i'm liking that idea actually because the thing is uh um like a mini webinar how long do you think that should be like 10 to like 10 to 15 minutes tops yeah Mm -hmm. yeah, so so here's so here's here's what a lot of people don't understand about webinars there are two different types of webinars there's a marketing webinar and there's a sales webinar. And so for everyone who's doing a webinar, which type of webinar are you doing? That's super important to know, right? Ajel, do you know what kind of webinar you're doing? Whether it's a webinar, a sales, a sales webinar? Okay, the cool. Sales webinar. That's, what, that's the difference between most people are like, well, should my webinar be 60 to 90 minutes? If it's a marketing webinar, yes. But if it's a sales webinar, it should be as short as possible because that's where the power offer comes from. You know, like, um, that's something I learned from Joel Irway. I run Joel Irway stuff like within my program and within my agency clients is because it's built to get people to raise their hand and say, yes, I want Laurel to do that for me. Um, versus a marketing webinar, I would be teaching my thing and people would be like, well, I don't understand how ads work. And that's a marketing webinar, right? Sales web. So that's what, that's why I was saying at, at far as far I would do, um, I would do a mini webinar present. It's more yeah, like a sales yeah. presentation and it's very, it's very, very simple. Actually, I probably still have it up from um, this morning. I, uh, yep. I still have it up. Let me pull it up for you. I'll just go through it real quick. Um, and it's kind of like going through yeah, the, once the, I made my webinar too, too long and the, the sales. <laughs> so the I call, are- I call mini webinars a clarity piece, right? Because the number one reason that people don't move forward, Scott knows this because Scott just went through this, uh, this framework with me, but this is what I do. Like it's super, super easy. Okay. Who is this for and why are they here? If you are a brand new tech company and you want to get to a hundred thousand dollars a month as fast as possible, you're in the right place. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to go over my three-step accelerator framework that has taken dozens of brand new tech companies from zero to multiple six figures using a very simple framework. So why should you listen to me? My name is Asfar. And for the last several years, I've done X, Y, and Z. Here's a screenshot. Here's a screenshot. Here's a screenshot. But I always wasn't this successful when it came to this strategy. When I first started, I did this. What were all the things that you did wrong? What were the things that you figured out in order to get to the framework that you just showed me, right? 
So, but here's the thing. There are three types of tech companies that this will not be far. And I want to get this out of the way before we get into the meat and potatoes, because if you don't need to be watching this video, I don't want you to watch this video. But number one, you have to be willing to spend X amount of money in order to market your business. If you're not willing to spend marketing, what I'm about to show you is going to have no use to you because you can't build a business without marketing. Number two, you have to be willing to do X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. So you go over the three things that are going to qualify them, right? Then part five, that's where you take that little drawing that you just showed me and you walk me through what that would actually look like. Show me a couple of screenshots from past clients that's going to work. And then you're going to go right. Taking the main road. And then you're going to go right into but the number two, taking the main road. Number one. That makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm glad this was recorded because I'm going to go back and listen to that a few more times. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah, like this morning, like <laughs> um, they were like, we went through that clarity piece and I literally wrote there just through flow of consciousness because we had been talking about their business. They were like, oh, my God, you just literally wrote our webinar because I was just talking to the camera. And I was just like talking, going through each of the things. And I did their like literally wrote their webinar for them. <laughs> Excellent. Scott has probably seen me do that a couple of times in the Lean on Laurel program, because once I get going, I'm just like, there you go there. I just wrote your webinar for you. <laughs> but, it, awesome. but you see how easy it, it didn't need to be like all of these like tra tricks and tactics and stuff. It was just like here. Here is like headline promise of value. That's how I started it. Right. Same yeah. as the power content. So that would be a that would be a, um, a a page, and then what's the CTA on that? What's the call to action? Book a call where okay. you will do a um, you can you can say hey I'm going to do a and call it something fun like you you keep having like the the revenue accelerator book a revenue accelerator roadmap call with me and we'll walk I'll walk you through how we could actually build this with your tech company and if I can't help you I can't help you but you're going to get some value on the call. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Very simple. And I would, I would build my entire ad strategy and organic strategy around that funnel. Okay. What does that mean? Like other, the other things hang off it, you mean? Or Yep. So everything, so all your power content, all your organic, because once you have the funnel, you have a way, right? A sales process to get people over the phone. So anything that you're doing organically, send people, Hey, do you want more information? Go to www.techexploder.com, blah, 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 blah. Just everything you're doing, like just goes straight to that funnel because it's already laid out the sales process. So anytime you're doing a freebie or anything like that, you're going to lead people to watching that mini webinar. Oh, then okay. all your marketing becomes simplified because now everything, everything that you're doing is getting people to go to that one funnel. Yeah. And that's actually quite easy to track then, isn't it? What's happening? You can see what, how many people mm -hmm. are hitting the page and stuff and Everybody that comes into my world, whether it's an agency client, it all begins and ends with my $7 program. That's all, that's all I have worked to market is that $7 program. Cause I know once people come into the $7 program, my work here is all, like, it's optimized to get people to the next level. Yeah. And the only opt-in there is on when they book a call, right? Yep. It's well, well with this funnel, you would have them opt in to watch the mini webinar. Oh, okay. And then the mini webinar would have a little box that would say apply here. It would take them to yeah. an application page and then calendar and then call confirmation. Yeah. So it's basically just a landing page with an opt-in and then they go to the, to the webinar page. Yeah. It'll be the same here. I'll actually just wave it up on the screen again. It would be this one right here. Right. Okay. Webinar opt-in Yeah. play page apply and then boom. Yeah. Very okay. simple. Then everything, everything that you do revolves around, Hey, my name's Aspar creator of accelerator, blah, blah, blah.com. You know, in your humble brag, it's like, I'm the founder of blah, 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 blah.com. You're always like dropping that vanity URL yeah. that leads to your mini webinar. Now do you, and, and I know that you, uh, you know, would follow that up with sort of ads and stuff, but do you think an email sequence as well would work? You know, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, like that funnel comes with an email sequence. The only reason I don't have it on there is because it like whenever I'm looking at the base funnel metrics, I'm just watching opt in to webinar watches to book in a call. I want that to be solid before okay. I worry about looking at emails and all of that, because that's just the kind of stuff that fluffs up the funnel. Um, so I want to make sure that the, the base funnel now when you launch the funnel, you want in a seven day email sequence, which, by the way, I have in the seven dollar program. It's in the um, Lanyap section. Okay. 
write your emails out, put it there, but don't worry about the email open rates and all of that stuff. Um, the main concern is getting that main funnel optimized and full of the right people. Then we can go back and say, well, people are watching the webinar. And then if people are watching the webinar and not moving forward, then we can kind of see, well, how, what's the open rate for the email? What are the watch rates for their retargeting ads? Like what are, um, but it all starts, it, it all starts with that base funnel. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And again, those emails are just um, pushing people to book a call, right? It's just. Yep. Everything that you're going to do after the, so if, so if you're doing top of funnel marketing, you send people to your vanity URL, that is the opt-in page yeah. for that webinar. Anyone that's middle of funnel, straight to the book a call. You want to just get them on a call, on a call, on a call. Okay. Do you think for you, are these like 15 minute calls? Are they more like sort of, uh, I do fit uh, for lean on Laurel. I do 15 minutes only okay. because like if, when they go to the page, there is like a mini webinar on the lean on Laurel page, um, that walks them through the framework. So by the time they get on the call, they already know the price. They already know everything. So by the oh, time they get on the call, they're just like, give me the link. Right. I see. Okay. Um, okay. Awesome. This is really great. Well, I think that, this is really timely, actually, because, uh, you know, the kind of the other work I've been doing kind of gives me the confidence for what I'm actually going to be saying on this thing. Like you're 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 gifted to be able to just be able to come out with it. But for me, I have to I just show it here. I'll actually hard. show it. I'll show you like mine is like nothing even like not even special. So I will even say this. I don't even have an opt in going to my webinar because I'm only showing it to people who are my warm traffic anyway. So I don't need to capture the lead. And I have I don't like emails. I don't do emails. And, you know. This is what this is where I send people. If people are interested, watch this video before applying to join. And then you can see I walked them through the funnel that I just walked y'all through. Like literally 16 minutes long. I'm like, if you ain't got 16 minutes and the patience to watch this video, you are not going to be a good fit for my program. Um, and then I just have like, you know, what they get, a one-on-one -on -one call, the the whole system done for them, daily QA, strategy calls, copy calls with my copywriter, ad audits with me, helping them press buttons in the ads manager. Look, I'm in Laurel. I'm ready to start now. I even was lazy, didn't even do application straight to Calendly. And I put the application here in Calendly. That's how, like, and I don't even, I, and I think it's like just the Calendly. Um, it, it redirects to a thank you page in my funnel. But other than that, like, Got it. that's that's all I'm doing. Okay, super, brilliant. Super, super easy. I don't, I, yeah. I don't like complicated things because the more complicated you make them, the more things go wrong and break. Right. A lot yeah. of times people like to do deadline funnels and all of that fun stuff. But the more stuff you add to a system, the mo the more unreliable it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, um, I guess my I guess part of this is because, you know, one of the first things I came across like several years ago was this like doing a full webinar. Right. And so I went down this route, which actually took like an inordinate amount of time developing this webinar and then another version then another version and so on. And then the problem is once you've invested so much time in that, you just want to really optimize it, right? You don't want to uh, like uh, let it go. Um, mm -hmm. But I think your strategy is great. And actually it's probably like in, in, in today's market, it's a little bit different to the way it was maybe two or three years ago. Like I think oh, today, yeah. <laughs> many people want like instant, don't they? They just want to know if it's right or not and then move kind of thing. So I think that is a little bit different as well. So maybe that's partly why there's been some evolution here. So um Especially with your audience, they don't want to sit, they're busy trying to get a tech company off the ground. They don't want to sit there and watch a 60, 90 minute thing about stuff they already know. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to know, can this person help me? How are they going to help me? And what am I going to get if I give this person money? Those are the yeah. three things anyone wants to know. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. So actually um, just again, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't give any sort of free lead magnet to it i mean there's no need for that is there really if i was doing so if i was doing my power content right and i'm moving that person to messenger i would pro i would probably just send them to the page without the opt-in so that they can see that there's value in it okay right just pretend that this is a nice fancy headline for like a webinar and but i would i would i would probably send them to the second page of your funnel versus your first got it yeah. If I already am talking to them in Messenger, because think about this, like, here's the way that I think about it. I have someone in Messenger. I think that's a much hotter lead than someone on your email list. That's well, the that's, way I think of it. Yeah. That's you know? what I found. Um, like, my statistics are that I got um, like 50 leads in the last two weeks or so. Okay. And 
one call came from my webinar, but two calls came from my messenger lead form, which actually has a lower budget. So, um, absolutely, absolutely. Like you could even run that lead. You could do lead form, deliver the the email like the the webinar to their email if you wanted to. Um, I'm liking lead forms right now because what were we talking about earlier? Like non pixelated action, right? Non pixeled actions. Lead forms are non pixeled actions. So even if you don't have a pixel, Facebook pixel goes away. Facebook ads still tracks your lead forms. I, I like lead forms right now for that reason. I'm, I'm trying to get away from like, I'm trying to train myself to not use the pixel at all. Um, okay. And so I like, but the pixel still is a, is a major, you know, tool in the market. You know, it's, it's a hack. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's the way that I look at it is like, use the hack as much as you can before we can't use it at all. Yeah, but right. oh, but also train yourself to not depend on that hack too. <laughs> okay, awesome. Listen, this has been really, really helpful. Thanks so much. I'm gonna you're giving me some uh, stuff to to work on straight away. So uh, I'm gonna get yeah, that done. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, Phyllis. Phyllis is asking about my my 90 day program. My 90 day program is perfect if you want to build your audience and you're not like like for instance like you're not quite sure what you want to offer and you want to have a lot of conversations with people. Um, I built the 90 day marketing program as a video funnel, right? So you don't have a physical funnel or anything like that. It's just like a day-to-day. -day. Um, has anyone here gone through my 90-day program? I, th I think, did I do part of it, Laurel? I don't know if I went through the whole thing, but I think I did part of it. One, one says he's starting it. Um, I like it because it's, it's very off the cuff. Um, so how I actually came up with it was every 90 days, my mentor and I we go through a 90 day plan and I've showed you guys a couple of examples on my YouTube channel of how I build out like my, my client strategies. But when I recorded the 90 day marketing system, it's me going through the process of my 90 day plan. And Juan will tell you, Nina will tell you, it's very off the cuff. Um, I'm just telling you my daily activity of what I'm doing with video marketing. So it's not like I'm doing a video every single day. Like some of it, it's like, okay, I took all these videos that I, that I did on my Facebook page, my Facebook lives, and I'm turning them into a YouTube ad. Here's how I did that. So it's literally building from your organic strategy and softly blending in a paid strategy when it comes to power content on YouTube, power content on Twitter, power, like using, utilizing your power content. So it kind of like helps you transition from organic into paid without going the hard, you know, sell offer type ads that are the most expensive. So it, to answer your question, if you want to build your visibility and your authority, and you want to have a lot of conversations, the 90 day program is, is really cool. Okay. That sounds interesting. And, and, um, what, what's the, what, what, what kind of money is that? Or is that? It's not, I know my mentor is like, he's like, I want you to sell it for $3,000, but you're going to sell it for something stupid cheap. And I was like, yep, $90, a dollar a day. <laughs> yeah. Juan says it's a dollar a day, but yeah, it's nine, it's $90. Um, here, I'll actually just drop the link so you guys can check it out. It's so uh, even though my organic marketing isn't necessarily dialed in, you think that's still good, a good fit? Oh, you're going to, you're going to dial it in. Okay, perfect. Uh, it's um I'll just like give you so there's one there's one exercise in here. Let me see if I can find the link. I think it's on my main. There we go. So there's one exercise there's one exercise in here. So it's like get an entire year's worth of content done in 90 days plus a system that will continue to bring in prospects and convert them on autopilot the rest of the year. Um, there's one exercise in here that will literally, you know, that 15 pieces of content exercise that I show you guys. Yeah. I show you yeah. guys how to take that 15 pieces of content exercise, turn it into 75 pieces and then 125 pieces of content using the same, not having to redo any work at all. It's like, and, and so there's kind of like different phases of it. Um, but yeah, my $90. 90 day 48. That's funny. 90 day. Yeah. I was like, cause I was watching at the time, 90 day fiance. And I was like, Oh, Lord, 90 day portier kind of was funny, but, um, we, we can call that time, but uh... I am a geek guys. Like there, I put, I threw it in the chat, That's a but, it, but it's literally like a day to day of like what you find in the $7 program, but like in a, in a very organized way to drip it. Okay. And we could, that's like a self-study we can do anytime. Uh... Yep. It's a self-study. You can do it anytime. 
And I always tell people if they want like, and use the $7 program or use these zoom coaching calls to get support for it. Okay. Like it's, it's total like in the ask Laurel or whatever. 90 day program. I love it because when you guys ask questions about the 90 day program, people are like, what's the 90 day program. And then people start sharing links and then I get more sales. So feel free to use the $7 program to get support on that. <laughs> okay. This is awesome because uh, I think this is a good time for me. Cause I, I've done a couple of, I've done, I think three or four lives. Um, I've got kind of started getting the hang of it. Um, like, you know, actually, and using. Uh, oh, this will get you very used to it. <laughs> I kind of throw you into uh, it. <laughs> yeah, so I've been I've been following your your uh, your kind of instructions, but I just haven't done enough yet, and I think this would really push me to get it all out there. Um, so that that would be really helpful. I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, and Miss Cheryl says this is a really good question. Really good question. Um, Cheryl says, hello, may I ask, is the power content strategy applicable as well in networking business? Yes, yes, power content. Like whenever people come into my program and they want a way to sell their network marketing business or their affiliate business because you know Facebook hates, hates poo-pooing on that, I always set them up with my power content strategy that gives away cheat sheets because once we get them in Messenger, we could sell them whatever, right? So the power content strategy is perfect for network marketers. Um, and you can use, you could use ads as long as your Facebook business page mentions nothing about your network marketing company. So for instance, um, I had a girl, one of my very first clients actually in the premium program, her name was Amy and she was a, um, a unique consultant, right? The, the makeup company and her offer was how did, um, it was for, but she, she niched down to business women. She was like, um, how to get out the door business meeting ready in less than 10 minutes. That was her lead magnet. And guess what? All of the lead magnet stuff that she, she had the video of how to do their makeup perfect in 10 minutes or less. And all the links on that lead magnet were all of her unique products. And she just literally power content, how to do good makeup like that. She just sent people there all using power content. And so power content is perfect to, to sell any type of offer, even the ones that aren't compliant with Facebook. Which content strategy, Lori? Yep, the power content in uh, the $5 ad strategies. There's also, um, I teach it in the seven day organic marketing strategy too. They're the same thing. One's got money on it and the other one doesn't. Laurel, I know and you've I, been- And I actually, just did a, I actually just did a playlist too on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, actually go to my Facebook business page. And I posted it. I said, cause everyone's been crazy about power content. I actually put all of my best power content video trainings in a playlist on my YouTube channel. That's called power content, mini training or something. Yeah. Happy to help you guys. So it was a good call. I got to go. I had an office day today. I've been talking all day. My voice is like shot. But I, I'm glad that you guys like spent some time with me. Um, yeah, thanks, Laurel. These, so it's these great. calls are so much fun. That I don't know why more people don't come to these calls, but I'm kind of happy because I do like them when they're super small. Me too. <laughs> this was terrific. Thank you so much. You're very thanks, welcome. Laura. Bye, guys. Okay, bye. bye.